Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Stephanie Ramos and it's with great joy and gratitude that I'm going to be presenting to you my mole poblano recipe. I'd like to introduce you all to my sister Cloud. Hi everyone. You guys uh, don't see me. I'm generally behind the camera once in a Well, we do have a few videos with me. Yeah. And um, just wanted to say thank you to everyone to our 1 million subscribers and our 94 million views on this channel. We wouldn't be here without you and your support and your love and your kindness. So we're here to celebrate you today. And we'd like to take this opportunity to have you leave a comment saying what you're thankful for and what you love about each other, about your family, or just anyone in general. We want you to leave your footprint so that uh, people can come and read your comments. Yeah, we all love to read comments. I love to read your comments. And when I don't get a chance to read your comments, guess who lets me know who left a comment? My sister, <laughs> Klaus. So not only is she our camera woman, she also helps a lot on the channel. Um, I'm super grateful. I am filled with emotion and you guys missed the crying part, but I'm so uh, happy to show you guys that this is going to be the 95 million view of mole recipe that you have all been working hard for. I can't keep all my promises, but this one is one that I can keep and I'm going to present to you guys the closest thing to a mother that I have, which is my sister. Oh, I am not her mother. <laughs> She's not my mother, but she loves me like a mother. I do. And when you know the mother's love, you guys know how much I love you. So let's not get so mushy and emotional and and go over the ingredients. For this delicious recipe, you'll need two and a half Ibarra chocolate bars, six mulato chiles, six pasilla chiles, three chipotle chiles, half a cup of raisins, half a cup of sesame seeds, half a cup of peanuts, one fourth of a cup of almonds, half a cup of animal cookies, one platano macho, half a piloncillo, three pieces of clove, half a teaspoon of anise seeds, half a tablespoon of cumin seeds, half a teaspoon of coriander seeds, six garlic cloves, half a cinnamon stick, one corn tortilla, one tablespoon of salt plus extra, half of a large onion, one cup of lard plus extra. Remove the stems and the seed from your mulato and your pasilla chiles. You wanna keep the seeds from your chile mulato, and this is also known as atole. Pretty much your oatmeal, it thickens your sauce, so you wanna keep this. And my tip to you is when making mole, try to use a wooden spoon. Uh, it can be the Mexican or a little paddle. Either way, it's going to turn out great even if you use a silicone spoon. Just make sure you're using the same spoon throughout the whole process. Place your burner on a medium heat and you're going to place your chile mulato and your chile pasilla. And what we're going to do is we're going to toast them. The important part here is not to burn your chiles. If you burn your chiles, your sauce is going to be bitter. And you're also going to burn the spice and all the flavors that we love from both of these chiles. And the chiles will tell you when they're ready. You can smell them and you can see that some of the skin starts bubbling up. And the bubbles that are here, they're not black. They're the color of the chile. Go ahead and place them into some warm water. And I've already added the remaining chiles in here and they're gonna be soaking for a good 15 to 20 minutes. Place your burner on a medium low heat. Add about three tablespoons of lard and allow that to warm up about 30 seconds. Once your lard is nice and hot, you're gonna add your chipotle chiles and you're gonna fry them until they get a little roasted and fluffy. Once you see your chipotle fluff up just like this, that means that they're ready. And they're ready to go meet the other chiles. We're gonna continue to soak these chilies for another, I wanna say it looks like 10 more minutes, okay? We just want them to get nice and soft. Place your burner on a medium heat and to your pan, you're gonna add a good amount of lard. You're gonna add your raisins and you're gonna continue to fry them up until they puff up. And once your raisins look like this, it's time to take them out and place them into a bowl of warm water. And if you see, I switched to a silicone spoon, that way I'm not taking all the lard with me. In the same pan, we're gonna start frying our corn tortilla. And once you've fried your corn tortilla like a nice little corn chip, you're gonna set it to the side. In the same pan, we're gonna start frying our garlic. Once your garlic is nice and fried, you're gonna go ahead and take them out of the pan and set them to the side. If you see smoke coming from your pan, you wanna lower your heat, that means it's too hot, and that's also a perfect time to start frying up your onions. Give or take six to eight minutes, 
you're going to start removing your onions. And I'm going to place them over a paper towel just to remove any excess uh, lard that I have on the delicious onions, which I really just want to eat all of them right now, but I'm not. <laughs> you need to add some lard as you go. I feel like I need a little bit more for the next ingredients that I do have to fry. So I'm going to allow that to warm up just a little bit. And once your lard comes to the same temperature, you're going to add your peanuts. And your peanuts are going to take anywhere from 8 to 10 minutes to fry up. Next, you're going to fry your almonds, and that should take you 15 to 20 seconds. And the same thing, we're going to place them right next to our peanuts. Next, you're going to fry your animal cookies. If you don't have animal cookies, you can use one bolillo bread. You can use three tortillas total. You can make it comfortable for your home. And your cookies fry up quickly. That should take you about 15 seconds. I think my platano is a twin, and I'm pretty excited about that. It's, it's kind of like you and Isis. How cute. <laughs> you see that our oil is already changing in color. It's really infused, and it's perfect because it's the last item that we're going to be frying. So go ahead and gently add your bananas. You can add them with the utensil. But you should, but this works for me. I'm dealing with stuff here. <laughs> it's always patty cake with the oil. It's really one mm -hmm. banana, but I said bananas because I see two of the centers. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Shout out to all the twins out there. We love you. We love triplets too. Quadruplets? <laughs> Let us know. All of you. <laughs> and once your platano macho is nice and fried and soft to perfection, you want to go ahead and remove it and set it to the side. I like to fry the fried ingredients first just to give them enough time to cool on their own. And next, it's time to toast. Next, you're going to place your clean pan on a medium heat. You're going to allow it to warm up a good 30 to 45 seconds before you start toasting your spices. And the spices we're going to be toasting are your cinnamon stick, your clove, your anise seeds, your cumin seeds, and your coriander seeds. You do have to continuously stir, and all of these ingredients will toast in 10 seconds. Mmm, -hmm. mm, que rico! And once you can smell all of your spices, go ahead and place them on a plate, a bowl. You just have to remove them from that heat. In the same pan, you're going to add a little bit of salt and your sesame seeds. And the reason we're adding the salt is to avoid the sesame seeds popping all over you because they're really hot and it's going to hurt. So take it easy and this should take you anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds. Remember, you're continuously stirring when you're toasting your spices. Remember, if your pan is smoking, that means that it's too hot. Lower your temperature. And save a little bit for your garnish. Lastly, we're going to toast our seeds from our chile mulato. That should be anywhere from 15 to 20 seconds. And go ahead and set them to the side. I'm using a high speed blender and to the blender, I'm going to use all of our toasted spices. And next we're going to blend until it's all pulverized. And after 30 seconds, it's going to be as if we took it to the molino to grind all our spices and our paste. The only thing you want to do is get a long spoon and scrape the sides because that sesame seed oil becomes a paste. And ooh, your house is just going to smell absolutely delicious. Next, you're going to add your soaked raisins with one third of a cup of your raisin water. Followed by your fried ingredients, your banana, almonds, cookies, peanuts, onions, garlic, and your tortilla. And now we're going to blend until smooth. I'm going to start slow at about a three speed and I'm going to slowly uh, pick up the speed as I see everything start to blend. Once you see your blender is not blending anymore, come and give it a mix, help it out a little bit, and then give it another go. We blend it as much as we could because it's really, really thick, but not to worry. What we're going to add next is going to help smooth everything out into the paste that we need. Next, you're going to add your beautiful chiles right into your blender. 
And we're gonna add about half a cup of our chili water. And with your spoon, you wanna separate a little bit to allow our water to go down to the bottom so it gives us a smooth blend that we're looking for. And boom, done. We have our mole paste and now it's time to cook it. Oh yeah. Place your pot on a medium heat and allow it to warm up. If you're using a clay pot, that's gonna take you about three minutes. Next, you're gonna add some lard and by some lard, I mean about half a cup of lard. Allow that to warm up and melt and that should take you about two minutes. Here's my tip to you, get to know your butcher, okay? They're gonna be able to give you the thigh that has all the fat and that's exactly what we're gonna to use to infuse our oil and give us the best flavor. You're gonna to continue to fry your chicken fat and your skin for about eight to 10 minutes, just until you see that it's well cooked and we've rendered all the fat from our chicken. And after about eight or 10 minutes, you're gonna see that all your chicken fat is rendered. You have chicken chicharrones, woo! It's a party in this pot. Go ahead and set it to the side, place it on a tortilla with a little queso fresco and your salsa and you're set for a taco while we continue for the hardest part of this recipe. Please be careful, your lard is nice and hot and I don't want anybody burning themselves so I'm going to start adding our paste slowly and it's going to be all the paste that we blended. As soon as that paste goes into that infused lard, oh my goodness, the smell in your kitchen is absolutely divine. So go ahead and add and give a little gentle mix as you go. And guess what? Now that you started mixing, you're not gonna stop for another 30 to 45 minutes. Now that you started mixing, you're not gonna stop for another 30 to 45 minutes. My pot is currently on a medium heat and you want to continuously stir. You don't want anything to settle at the bottom. You just want to combine with love. And just when you think you're ready, guess what you're not? You're going to continue to stir. You know why? Because we're taking out any of the moisture in this paste so that it lasts a very, very long time in your refrigerator. And then if you choose to freeze it, it'll last even longer. And what do I mean? It can last you up to a year. And while you're stirring, you want to place one bar of your chocolate into warm water. And if you know you really love chocolate, go ahead and use two, but I'm going to start off with one. And I'm going to add a little extra sweetness by placing the tip of our piloncillo in the warm water as well. I've been stirring for a good five minutes here, and you think you're done. You're like, oh, that looks like mole. No, you're not. Keep on going. And I do want to share a tip with you. Whoever started mixing your mole, has to finish it. There is no going, oh, come and help me. No. Keep, keep it with your essence. What if your soulmate wants to help you mix? Well, I hope your soulmate was helping you toast. I hope your soulmate went to the grocery store with you. I meant for you, sweetie me. Yeah. <laughs> and you did do all that. You can help me. <laughs> you can help me if you want, but I got this. She won't let me, guys. That's I got this. Thing. I want to cook this mole for you guys. Let me cook. I've been stirring for 15 minutes. And now I'm gonna add our mixture of our chocolate and our piloncillo. If you don't have piloncillo, you can use sugar. We're gonna cook this for 10 minutes. And in 10 minutes, we're gonna come and taste our mole. And then that's when you're gonna decide if you're gonna add more chocolate. If you want it sweeter, you add more piloncillo. And then if you have the balance and you enjoy my take and my taste buds, we're gonna salt it. Next, you wanna taste your mole paste. And if you want a little bit sweeter, do the same thing with your chocolate bar, melt it and your piloncillo, and then you would add it and mix and continue to cook. Our paste is perfect to how our family likes it. Now I'm gonna add our salt. That's one tablespoon of coarse salt. And if you're using table salt, I would start with half because it ends up being a bit saltier. But if you can get a hold of like sea salt, a coarse salt, I suggest you go with that. I'm going to continue to stir for another 15 minutes because it usually does take me 45 minutes. And just so you guys know, I haven't stopped. You can come in closer to look at the sauce. And 
and after you cook it for another 10 minutes you want to adjust your salt to taste but I think that's a good starter for you guys especially when you add your chicken broth you salt your chicken broth so you don't want to add too much salt to your paste a lot of people aren't gonna give you their personal tips but I'm gonna give you mine because I love you when my arm gets tired I hold the spoon like this and I keep mixing Remember, this mole will have a little splatter, and that splatter might stain some of your uh, kitchen. So just make sure to clean it up as you go. It's kind of like fried chicken. You don't want the oil to stay there. So please just clean up, and then boom, done. No, we're not done with the mole. We're still stirring. <laughs> Give or take, I've been here about 35 to 40 minutes stirring. And what I like to do is I like to place my burner on a low heat for the last five to 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna set this aside and then I'll show you guys how I make it when I'm serving our mole. And we are done, coming close, coming close. It's almost like if you were making uh, refried beans, that's kind of the consistency you're looking for. Just like that. And now I'm going to start removing our paste. I'm going to be placing this in one of our jars and placing it in the refrigerator, but I'm going to leave enough paste out here so that I can make you some mole. Some chicken mole? Some chicken mole, Cloud. Yum. Thank each and every one of you for allowing me to feed you virtually. One day it'll happen in person and I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be quite a treat for all of us. And now to make your mole, I have about one cup because I'm just excited that it's made fresh so I'm being extra. It's not canned so I have a lot to work with. <laughs> and I'm going to start adding about three to four cups of freshly made chicken broth. I've been boiling this chicken on a very low heat. It's juicy, it's tender, and it wants to go into your mole paste. And on a medium heat, you just want to continue to combine all your ingredients. Once you dissolve your paste, you want to taste your sauce. And if you want to add some salt, you can. And to be honest, if you spend all this time making mole out of scratch, there is no reason for you to use any kind of bouillon in here. Um, you guys know I love it, but there, there's really no reason for it. Okay, I know you never thought you'd hear me say that, but I'm saying that right now. We're going to put some respect on this recipe and on your little hard work. I'm going to continue to cook on a low heat for another four to five minutes, and then we're going to be ready to serve. Okay, it's time for me to confess here. This sauce is absolutely delicious, but I'm going to tell you, I got carried away. I ended up using a total of two cups of this paste because it's just so good and rich and in order to get this thickness you're gonna need about one and a half to two cups and you just work so hard and, and why not treat yourself treat yourself this okay is I give you permission <laughs> this is ay dios mio and boom done our mole sauce is ready thank you queen thank you sister and thank each and every one of you for being here today and celebrating with us you want to serve your mole with some Mexican rice. It smells so good. And your garnish, your toasted sesame seeds. Buen provecho, everybody. I'm gonna need somebody very, very special. Someone that subscribed to the channel and is a Views Club member to say, uh... And before I take this bite, I wanna say thank you to YouTube for being amazing, super kind, and for all the support here on YouTube and our other employer, Google, for always having our back. Thank you, and now let's eat.
You forgot to thank yourself like Snoop Dogg. Oh. <laughs> I'll thank myself. This mole is a home run. Now you guys have a mole that you can present to your family that you're proud of. Mmm. Mmm. Some of you said take little bites, Steph, on my last recipe, but it's kind of hard on this one. <laughs> it is. I agree. Mmm. Wow. Once you make your own mole, you're never going to want to buy the paste pre-made. You're just not. It's just a labor of love. You guys waited for this recipe for a very long time, and I understand why. <laughs> it's a labor of love, and I love you. Please let me know when you make this recipe. Tag us on our social media, and most of all, leave us a comment as beautiful as you. Hmm. And for those of you wondering what this tastes like, it's savory, sweet, it's well balanced, and if you like curry, if you love guisado stews, you're going to love this sauce. It's not just about chocolate like you would get from Hershey's. It's a totally different ball game the way that these ingredients are combined. It's mastered by some Mexican ladies and I'm so thankful to them. Oh! Oh! <laughs> mm. Absolutely delicious. As always, my sister Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see, see you guys tomorrow. tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Adios. Ooh. You're blowing kisses. I don't know. You guys need love. Tell Cloud to blow your kisses. <laughs>